Vitaly Klitschko, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Um, two years ago, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians took to the streets against what they believed to be a corrupt authoritarian government. Uh, the president, Viktor Yanukovych, fled to Russia. Two years later, what do you believe has been the number one, the main achievement of that quote-unquote revolution in your country? Uh, people understand uh, right now they have influence and in from uh, opinion uh, every citizens depend the direction which dr uh, which direction go the country and right now uh, the ca country changed but expectation of people much bigger uh, yes of course uh, we expect much more changes much more uh, fight against corruption much uh, better dynamic uh, to be part of European Union. You mentioned corruption. Uh, two years on from Euromaidan, from those mass protests that were prompted partly by anger over corruption, today in Kiev, protesters keep coming back on the streets to protest against corruption again. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, says it may hold back a crucial bailout unless your government does something about corruption. Why have you and your fellow politicians in Ukraine been unable to tackle corruption? People thought uh, we change the uh, we change the faces, but not to change the system. And uh, they expect much more, much faster change. Yeah. And uh, that why the corruption still, still already. We make huge step. I'm responsible for Kyiv, and uh, it's we investigate everything what happens uh, before we find uh, billion of stolen money and uh, give everything to prosecutor office. Um, some say that Ukraine is less of a democracy and more of an oligarchy. It's the big business tycoons, the oligarchs and the gas and energy industries who really run your country. Uh, it's not true, but they have uh, huge influence because they have uh, tried to uh, control the media, tried to uh, control uh, resources of, uh, of Ukraine and uh, uh, also, the oligarchs destroy the economy. Equal opportunities for our economy because uh, uh, we doesn't have a middle class. And um, you're currently head of President Petro Poroshenko's uh, political faction in Ukraine. Some say the president himself is an oligarch. Uh, could you explain why, after the president publicly called for the prime minister last week uh, to resign, <coughs> some say a very bold move, uh, around 30 of your own MPs failed to back and no confidence motion in his government. And the prime minister, embarrassingly for the president, maybe for you too, survived. He's still the prime minister. Answer is very clear. Some politician put his ambition over interest of the country. It's a big problem. And the uh, whole country expect changes, fast changes. If you're not good enough, you have to go. Do you still think the prime minister should stand down even after surviving this vote of no confidence? Right now, it's a question right now for everybody who, uh, how develop whole situation and uh, in Ukraine, but uh, if politicians... You'd still like to see him go? Yes, I told it uh, will be right decision. Um, the Russian Prime Minister, Dmitry Medvedev, said last week that the West and Russia have, quote, slid into a time of a new Cold War. Ukraine, your country, isn't just in the middle of that Cold War. It's one of the main battlegrounds. Uh, for that new Cold War. It's one of the causes, some might say, of that new Cold War. Uh, it's right. We have a feeling it's uh, the Cold War starting from Russia. First of all, uh, I grew up in the Soviet Union. I, my father was an uh, Air Force officer, and uh, I remember how works uh, media and propaganda in Russia. It's the main weapons. Right now, we understand the media is main weapons in Russia. They invest billions of dollars, and I know how effective that. Uh, and uh, today, w I told we lose the game, uh, the war against Russia, uh, media war. But do, you, but do you believe we are? In a, you believe we are in a, 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 cold, a cold war, not just Ukrainian Ukrainians fighting separatists. It's a cold war between the rest and Russia again. You believe uh, the Russians? Uh, everything what uh, happens right now in Russia remind me and uh, as Soviet Union. It reminds you of Soviet and, Union. And uh, the main goal it's not secret. The main goal of Russia to rebuild the empire, uh, to bring and without uh, Ukraine. Rebuild empire almost impossible, and that why uh, instability come from east of uh, Ukraine, from Russia.
But isn't in, there in, a need have, then to come to an end, to come to some kind of compromise? You're never going to defeat Russia militarily. Isn't there a need for pragmatic purposes, for practical purposes, pra to save lives, to just bring this conflict to an end? Pragmatic, uh, pragmatic uh, movement, what we have to do. We have to implement uh, every, all part. Ukraine and Russia uh, have to implement uh, Minsk agreement. Okay, that was the agreement last year that fell yeah. apart. Um, you mentioned all the problems come from Russia and the destabilizing and, and the Russian-backed separatist rebels have indeed been accused of human rights abuses of violence. But so too have Ukrainian armed forces and volunteer battalions. Listen to what Amnesty International said last year. Both sides failed to take reasonable precautions to protect civilians. Both placed troops in residential areas. Ukrainian police were involved in torture. Pro-Kiev forces were involved in abductions. Is this the new Ukraine you're trying to build, where all these human rights violations are happening, even under Ukrainian armed forces, Ukrainian police? Not just the Russian-backed separatists I, who I'm, are committing I, I, violations. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, where's the reason of conflict? Can you uh, give me an answer? Where's the reason for conflict? That doesn't justify human rights abuses, though, does it? No, no. You can fight well, them without with, carrying with the, out torture, where, abductions. From, from, from the beginning. This is what Amnesty is saying. From, from the beginning. Right now, the uh, right radicals come to, to the power. Uh, the people who headed Russians in, uh, in uh, Ukrainian government, I told the clear answer how we can uh, head the Russians. I am health Russians. My father is Ukrainian, my mother is Russian. So in, in my body is uh, And Russian there have blood. been allegations it's, that there are neo-Nazis fighting in volunteer it's, units it's, against uh, Russians. Nazis, Nazis fighting, it's, uh, it's not true. It's, uh, everything is a propaganda war. It, uh, well, US newspapers, not just Russian newspapers, have documented the Azov Battalion and other such groups fighting on the front lines against Russia, who have uh, swastikas on their, on their trucks. Uh, it's, it's not uh, true at all? I, I, I don't see swastik. I talk to the people, we defend our territory, we defend our... And what about the human rights violations? We, what do you say about we, we, defe we defend our country. What about the torture, we, the abductions, the not protecting civilians, placing troops? Please, uh, well, 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 human well, rights I, I don't know what from you take this information. Amnesty I International, you've you heard of Amnesty International? I'm sorry, I, I come from Ukraine. Okay, but Amnesty International is a global yes. NGO, good, Human Rights good, Watch. Good, good, uh, good example, I meet very high, uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Davos, I meet very uh, high position Russians and uh, they ask me, you know what is uh, the people with the weapons, uh, with machine guns going to the street in the Kiev, I'm, I told them, I'm sorry, I come from Kiev. What? Uh, what so from you take this information? They told me, you know what TV, uh, TV So you're saying the show. Ukrainian force haven't I, committed they, any human rights the violations? Right, right answer. They create the story and believe in the story. Okay, so you reject human rights, what you reject Amnesty International's reports about uh, Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, I don't have information. I live okay. in Ukraine. Okay, you're a, big, you're a big chess player. You've said, quote, chess is I'm similar to... I'm not a big player. As you're, uh, you're a fan uh, of chess, I believe. Yeah, okay, I'm a fan, fan player. <laughs> you, you said chess is similar to boxing. You need to develop a strategy. You need to think two or three steps ahead of what your opponent is doing. Many would say it's Vladimir Putin who's been two or three steps ahead of the Ukrainian government, of Western nations, uh, when it comes to the issue of Ukraine, Crimea. He's outwitted you all. Is that fair? Uh, he's a good player. He's a good player, and uh, uh, this game is not easy because he used all uh, uh, strong side, whatever Russia, and uh, in this game. And uh, uh, but but anyway. Uh, but what do you I think the West should be doing to stop him that they're not doing? What would you like to be seeing? United. More? It's very important. Are uh, they not uni is the West not united uh, right now? United position is very important uh, against Russia. It's Russian uh, instead to. In, um, uh, Instead to invest the money to economy, they invest so much money in uh, secret service, in military, and uh, Russians right now with sanctions have a huge but, problem. But do you think the and West is not united in its approach to Russia? Uh, You're saying you want to see united fronts. Uh, I mean, it's not united. I'm now. more than sure the West have to be united, and uh, united position is, will be very strong argument against Russia. And do you see a foresee a day? Do you foresee a day where there is actual military confrontation between the West and Russia? Uh, I hope not. I hope not. We try to find a solution. It's a diplomatic solution, and uh, but uh, it's not a question about uh, uh, our independence and not a question about uh, uh, territory of Ukraine. Um, President, no, in this way, it's no solution. President Putin's PR people, you mentioned propaganda earlier in the interview, President Putin's PR people often put out pictures of him uh, topless or working out in the gym or on horseback or, doing, uh, or engaged in judo. Uh, you've been a boxer, a fighter your whole life. Does he intimidate you? Uh, 
uh, his uh, is his uh, PR strategy. It's uh, it's not mean. As uh, I am former boxer, I have to be uh, topless with a boxing gloves, <laughs> present myself. Uh, uh, Sometimes it's looking very funny. It looks funny. It's not something you're afraid of. It's more something you're laughing at. No, no, no. It's, uh, I'm not afraid. It's 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 uh, some uh, funny pictures. There are these constant allegations endorsed by the Interior Ministry under President Yanukovych, who you opposed, that you served as a debt collector for this mafia boss, Victor the Fish Rabalco. People make these claims that he was a backer of your boxing career until he was killed in 2005. Is there any truth to those allegations of your relationship with the, with the fish? Please, uh, don't read uh, the trash information. There's so much uh, uh, trash information around the world uh, and uh, so much speculation. If you come... Uh, it's no commentary for that. It's, I, I, I don't uh, see the reason to make, okay. uh, to make a commentary for... Okay, uh, what's the difference? What's the number one difference between being a boxer, trying to be the heavyweight champion of the world, and being a politician in a country like Ukraine? Um, in boxing, you have clear rules. If uh, you break the rules, you're disqualified. Uh, in politics, is a fight, no rules. Uh, and, <laughs> but there's uh, supposed to be rules in politics. Uh, there's not in Ukraine at the moment? You know what, young democracy is uh, supposed to be the rules, but uh, I have a f uh, feeling as boxer I come to MMA, and uh, <laughs> worse than MMA because uh, this fight is very, uh, very tough. Vitaly Klitschko, thanks for joining me on Upfront.